The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. Agriculture comes to you today from Ridgetown College, and we're joined by Albert Tenuta. Welcome to Real Agriculture, Albert. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Hey, we're standing in a field of soybeans here, and we want to talk a little bit about uh, seed treatments, fungicides, and their value, and, and I guess the impact of potentially, you know, losing them or having them curtailed. And I guess it's well, let's start with this field of soybeans we're standing in here. Safe to say that this field will be, you know, there would be some great challenges if you didn't have a seed treatment. Yes, in terms of, um, and this is a great example, um, where the challenges early on in the season, uh, where the fungicide seed treatments are, are, are the most beneficial, are basically the four um, damping off diseases, uh, Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, Pythium, and, and Phytophthora. And um, they have been uh, managed quite effectively with um, certain options that we have there. Crop rotation is one where we recommend corn, soybean, wheat rotation, the greater the rotation, um, the better at, at minimizing uh, many of the, the soil-borne pathogens. Unfortunately, many of these soil-borne pathogens are the best ones, are able to infect multiple different crops. So rotation on their own isn't um, an effective tool by itself. Genetic resistance is important, um, but for things such as Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, we don't have a lot of resistance or tolerance in our commercial soybean varieties, for instance. Uh, so fungicide seed treatment can definitely benefit or provide growers with uh, an insurance policy in terms of reducing their overall risk. And the other thing is we're seeing uh, not only shorter rotations, more beans on beans or corn on corn and all that, then, which allow for uh, greater opportunity for these pathogens to develop and cause injury in that, but we're also planting earlier in many, year, in many cases. And that can result in conditions that are unfavorable for germination. And it's early season when many of these pathogens are most problematic or have the greatest impact on the producers, not only in terms of stand establishment, but ultimately that can be affected throughout the year. And so it's important that a fungicide seed treatment um, for corn, soybeans, and wheat be used. And now's the perfect time. As you're planning for next year and you're um, de um, determining your corn hybrids or your soybean varieties to also include uh, that fungicide seed treatment uh, as a necessity. Albert, take us back in time here before uh, seed fungicide seed treatments and you know what you what you saw um, on roots and some of the challenges you know a crop like this would face compared to you know uh, I guess that added element of protection that uh, that they now have. Well, what we've seen is over the years, um, fungicide seed treatments have been able to reduce those losses early on in terms of stands and, and stand establishments and, and that. Um, but more importantly, it's allowed us to, to continue um, sustainable, um, effective uh, production of soybeans in the province. But with that, there, these are biological systems and things change over time. So what we've also, and one of the areas that we'll be focused on in the near future is that although our fungicide seed treatments have very, been very effective at managing our pathogen spectrum, those diseases that are occurring right now, new ones always are able to fill in that void. So as we control certain ones, other ones come in. And so what we're seeing now is that new species of Pythium, for instance, that maybe are better adapted to the environment. Warmer conditions are starting to, to increase, not only in Ontario, but the Midwest U.S. Corn Belt as well. So this is always a, a moving target whenever we're talking about disease management, that what works today may not be working in the future because these biological systems that adapt to our management strategies and we see that and that's why it's important that we continue to evaluate not only the seed treatments of today 
but where are we going to be in the future? So they'll see treatments of the future. And one of the areas, or two areas, that are important and that are getting a lot of attention by OMAF, University of Guelph, and others is um, in terms of seed treatment nematicides for both corn and soybean, nematode management or suppression, but also looking at targeting uh, more specific pathogens instead of these broad spectrum fungicides that, uh, that have multiple different um, pathogens that they, they control or manage. Now we may be targeting ones such as sudden death syndrome, for instance, or fusarium on its own, or rhizoctonia. So growers will see in the future that not only will you have broad spectrum fungicides, but you'll be seeing these more of these niche uh, products out there that are targeting specific um, pathogens or diseases that may be not fully controlled um, or have been able to um, take that opportunity to, to flourish um, or avoid those management tools that we have right now.